Welcome to another episode from Virtualize Everything. So, as most of you have probably noticed, we've been doing a lot of different YouTube videos about web development, and that's mainly because I've been working on web development classes myself in my personal time. And a lot of what I do in my personal time drives a lot of what we make for videos here, because this is the information that I'm learning at the current moment. So although I've been fairly comfortable doing a lot of the server side stuff for quite some time, and I've been making videos now, I guess, for like three years almost for you guys on a lot of the server side stuff. As far as web development, web applications, and graphical user interfaces, I haven't been very comfortable with the programming. I mainly write most of my computer-related programming in Python. I do write G-code, as you guys know, as I was a machinist for many years. But as far as computer stuff, I basically work in Python. A little bit of C for Arduino stuff and a few other things that I play around with, but basically Python. So I set out earlier this year to start learning some web front-end coding in a class that covers both front-end and back-end development. Well, our newest section of the course requires that we use some React JS to program the front end of a web page. And the course necessarily gave us directions of how to do that on Windows, but I don't have Windows. And I don't like running a lot of this stuff on my Mac. I know there's various ways that I could have done this just on my Mac and continued on. But hey, I have a Proxmox server in the cupboard that runs this type of stuff. It's meant to. So let's figure out how to do it on there. So this video's how to do this in a Proxmox container. It's actually quite easy and straightforward, and I think you guys will be shocked at how quick we can actually set this up and get it ready to use. So with that, I've hopefully enlarged my web interface enough that you can see it, and we're going to create a container. So here, we're gonna give it a host name, and I'm just gonna call it VE node for you, and we're gonna set up a password. All right, that's all we're gonna have to do here. So next, we're going to pick our standard Ubuntu 2210 image. I believe our drive size alone is eight gigs, should be fine. One core shared, 512 memory shared, network, I'm setting to DHCP because I'm lazy here. And I'll set this basically static inside of my router and then use a reverse proxy to communicate with it if I was trying to do this in real life and not making a video on that. And if you're interested in some of that reverse proxy stuff, I know that we covered a little bit of reverse proxy in our last video on Docker Compose. And definitely, if you want a more in-depth uh, explanation of setting up an Nginx reverse proxy, go ahead and drop it in the comments, and maybe I'll make a video on it. So anyways, we're going to hit next again, DNS, so we hit next, and we're going to start it after it's created and press finish. All right, so it should be starting up now, and we have a console. So it looks like I opened the wrong console, and I apologize for that. So let me go ahead and get the right console up. There we go. So let's go ahead and log in with root and the password that we set up, just like we always do. And the first thing we need to run is an apt update and and apt upgrade dash y install any new software or updates that need to be done to our container image. All right, so now we need to install two programs, Node.js and NPM. So again, apt install Node.js space NPM and enter. Let's say Y. All right. So that was a pretty lengthy install, but everything seems to have installed correctly. But let's go ahead and check and see if everything did. So the first command to do that is going to be node-v, and we got a version of 18.07 here in March of 2023. npm-v, we got a version of 8.18, and then npx-v, and another version of 8.18. Now, this step is entirely not required, but I like to do it because I don't like to work in the root user any longer than I need to. And I probably could have actually even done the installs before I, uh, after I did this step. But I'm going to go ahead and add user 
and then add user sudo. So now I can exit and I have a user of VE. So it's time now that all of that is done to actually create our React server. In order to do that, it's suggested that you navigate to wherever you want to create your uh, React application. In my case, I'm going to do it at home slash VE. So, which that's my VE home directory, and I already created that user, and I'm logged in as that user. So I should just be able to now run npx, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this command, as I will spend more uh, more of your guys' time typing it and saying it out loud. So npx create React app, and I'm going to name my app my app. But you can entirely change the ending my app to whatever you so choose. We're going to say why, and we're going to download all the dependencies that we need for our app. Now, there's no files in here at all at the moment, so this is just going to be a blank server that's going to demonstrate a test page for us so that we know that we're up and running. Alrighty, so we should now be able to run ls and we see my app, so we can cd to my app and we should be able to run npm start and our application should start up. And I'm noticing that I'm going to have to restart, so I will be back in a second. I once again was not paying attention when I set this up, and I don't have access to this from my computer to demonstrate the web page. So I'll be right back. All right, so if I run an IP address, you can see that my IP address has changed. So let's go ahead and CD to my app, just like we did before, and we should be able to run npx, npm, start, and it should start up. And instead of 192.168.50 something, it's 192.168.65. The IP address has changed. So now we should be able to head back to our web browser, open up a new tab, and we want to be on 4000. And there you have it. There's our React JS server up and running so we can start playing with developing in React JS for new JS apps. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll soon be figuring out how to do this in Docker so you can also host this same server in Docker. As always, have a good night.